Part 2. Prime Factorization. Section A. Factoring. Factors are two numbers that, when multiplied together, give you another number. Like, 2 and 3 are factors of 6, because 2 times 3 equals 6. And 4 and 5 are factors of 20, because when you multiply them together, they equal 20. 2 and 10 would also be factors of 20. So would 1 and 20. Now, sometimes we're given a particular number and asked to list the factors of that number. So we're going to go through an example and show you how that works. Take a look. If we're going to factor the number 36, we can start with the 1, because it's a factor of every number except 0. We know that 1 times 36 equals 36. So 36 will be the second factor we list right here. Now the process becomes kind of hit or miss. So let's go in a logical order and try the number 2. 2 is a factor of 36 because it divides evenly into 36. So what number do we multiply 2 by to get 36? The answer is 18. That means 18 is another factor, and we put it right here. See how we're working towards the middle? Next, is 3 a factor? Well, 3 multiplied by 12 equals 36, so 3 and 12 are both factors. 4 times 9 equals 36, so they are both factors. 5 doesn't make the grade because we can't multiply it by any whole number to equal 36. 6 multiplied by 6 equals 36. So we list it as a factor one time, right here. We don't need to write it twice because all we're doing by putting it in this list is saying that it's a factor. Since 6 times itself equals 36, we know we're done with our factoring because there's no whole number between 6 and 6. Lining it up this way, we can see all the factors of 36. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 9, 12, 18, and 36, laid out in sequential order. Let's try one more of these, using the number 18. As always, we start with 1, and we see that 1 times 18 equals 18. So these are both factors. Is 2 a factor? Well, 2 times 9 equals 18, so both of these are factors. How about 3? 3 is also a factor, because 3 times 6 equals 18. 4 isn't a factor, and neither is 5, because we can't multiply them by any other whole numbers to get 18. Now we know we've found all possible factors because we've already used 6, and there are no whole numbers between 3 and 6 that work. These numbers we just factored are examples of something called composite numbers. That means they have more than two factors. For example, the number 20 is composite because it has six factors. 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, and 20. But don't get caught thinking all numbers have many factors there's another kind of number that actually has only two factors total. These numbers are called prime numbers. A prime number is a number that only has two factors, one and itself. For example, seven is a prime number because it only has two factors, one and seven. No other two positive integers can be multiplied together to give us the number seven. Same thing with 13. The only two positive integers we can multiply to equal 13 are one and 13. 5, 17, and 19 are also prime numbers. Now, take note that the number 1 is a special case because it's neither prime nor composite. 1 only has one factor, which is itself. So the only factor of 1 is 1, and by definition, a prime number must have two factors, 1 and itself. So the difference between prime and composite numbers is that prime numbers have only two factors, and composite numbers have more than two factors. Got that? Now, there are times when you'll need to know which numbers are prime and which are composite. Back in the 3rd century BC, there lived a man of invention named Eratosthenes. They called him the second Plato. They even nicknamed him Beta, because it means second. Eratosthenes calculated the Earth's circumference by paying attention to the Earth's shadows and using simple geometry. Modern-day accounts show he calculated the circumference of the Earth accurately to within 1%. He was also a librarian and invented a way to pinpoint all prime numbers. This guy was smart. Eratosthenes created a sieve, like this one. Except with his, we can figure out all the prime numbers less than a certain designated number. The sieve is like a filtering system that eliminates all of the numbers that aren't prime and leaves us with the ones we want. Let's use the sieve to figure out all prime numbers less than 100. 
Our first step is to figure out all of the prime numbers less than the square root of 100. If you don't know about square roots yet, don't worry too much about it right now. We're going to look at that more in the next section. For now, just know that the square root of 100 equals 10. So what are all the prime numbers under 10? We've got 2, 3, 5, and 7. Remember, we know this because each of these numbers has only two factors, 1 and itself. Next, we need to write out all of the numbers from 1 to 100 like this. Now we figure out all of the multiples of 2, 3, 5, and 7 that are less than 100 and cross them off. For example, the multiples of 7 are 14, 21, 28, 35, 42, 49, 56, 63, 70, 77, 84, 91, and 98. So we got to cross them all out. We do the same thing for the multiples of 2, 3, and 5, and we get a sieve that looks like this. All of the remaining numbers that are not crossed off are the prime numbers less than 100. So, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, 29, 31, 37, 41, 43, 47, 53, 59, 61, 67, 71, 73, 79, 83, 89, and 97 are the primes less than 100. And that's how the sieve of Eratosthenes works. Remember, too, that the sieve works with any whole number you want. So if we wanted to find all the prime numbers under 225, we'd just choose that as our starting number and follow the same steps. It's important to know what the prime numbers are, especially the first five or six, because we're going to be using them throughout our next section for factoring. And you'll most likely be using them throughout your math courses. So you might want to do the sieve a couple of times to really get them down. Sure, it'd be easier if we just told you, but you need the math practice.